In today's video, we're going to go over the last 7 to 14 days, plus take you through the rest of the month of September as we have several big storms to talk about, including another storm coming out of the tropics that could have yet another U.S. storm threat. So let's dive into the details and kind of take you back the last seven days. Here is your overall temperature anomalies. This is your above and below average means. And you can see predominantly that cool shot of air entered the West Coast with breaking that heat wave that they've been dealt with over the last couple of weeks. So those temperatures finally were able to cool down for them. But with the combination of two storms with Francine and uh, another storm, we'll call a no-name storm off the South Carolina coast, that overall with above average rains kept the temperature anomalies on the cooler side with all the rain and the cloud cover. But the middle part of the country, you can see it's been warming up in a big way. In fact, those areas across northern portions of Minnesota, yeah, we're talking 14 degrees above average just over the last seven days. So here's take a look at the overall precipitation. Yes, here's the, com here's the combination of eating away some of the drought stricken areas across the Pacific Northwest, a good part of Idaho into Montana, back into the Dakota. So actually welcome rains for them and sporadic showers that, in that inundated portions of, you know, Arizona back into New Mexico, as well as into Colorado, into Western portions of Nebraska and Kansas. But yes, the bullseye was this area right here with the combination of Francine and then the no-name storm that never officially had got a name but left plenty flooding rains especially right off the carolina coast so it's this area right here that's been inundated just uh not just in the last seven days but man just this hurricane season alone has been several storms hit the same general area and yet we possibly have another system that could be coming to fruition about a week away so let's take a look at the setup this morning because we're still dealing with that cool shot of air in fact it's actually pushed a little bit further off to those areas into arizona finally phoenix broke that streak of 113 days in a row of triple digits only 93 for them they'll be they'll be sitting in the 90s for the rest of the week but you can see definitely the middle part of the country continues to remain on the warm, if not hot side. And these well above average temperatures up there in Canada over time is going to help lower the pressures and some of those pressures down there in the Caribbean. And that is what we're going to be looking at as we head into next week of possible tropical development down there into the Caribbean. So for today, we've got to be concerned about more big storms that are going to unfold with this deepening trough that continues to dive across the west. And of course, we got the surge of warmth in the middle part of the country, and that supports the clash in temperatures. And whenever you see that, we're going to be seeing a round of showers and thunderstorms break out across this region while the remnants of what uh, that no-name storm is still lingering off the east coast still ringing out some precipitation so here's the storm threat for today we're gonna have a line of showers and thunderstorms likely will turn severe after four or five o'clock into the early evening time frame essentially from minnesota all the way through areas of uh, uh, iowa there into east you know west eastern portions of nebraska central kansas and swinging into western oklahoma as well as even the texas panhandle while the remnants of that no-name storm is still off the east coast and then as we head into tomorrow, I think those storms even amplify even higher back into Thursday with more storms and some higher, some uh, larger hail associated with these back through Minnesota. You can, you know, those temperatures have been plenty warm, right? So that clash is going to be big time. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of cold air aloft with this. So definitely concerned about some larger hail associated with these, uh, with this activity that will likely swing into Wisconsin, more into Iowa, and then fishtail further south into Missouri, back into Eastern areas of kansas but even going into friday that will continue to shift off to the east so now we're talking including more areas into wisconsin now michigan will likely get into the action and further south into illinois missouri and back into indiana during the day on friday with more storm development for them 
So looking at the big picture on Friday, here's the overall setup. We still got the trough. In fact, we have a renewed cool spot diving all the way down into Southern California, back into Arizona. This is the activity that's likely going to take this path right here uh, over the next couple of days from Friday, while we have a ridge of high pressure really building and then just dominating almost a heat wave happening again with the... Uh, even near record temperatures. I mean, some of these areas in Texas could actually approach the triple digit mark again, while yes, the continued warmth amplifies those areas all the way, the surge into Canada and the lowering of pressures underneath. And yes, we'll be watching that little hot spot that will likely come to fruition uh, early next week in the Caribbean. So, but there's that vorticity going into Saturday. We've got another little cool shot of air a colder pocket of air with this and as it continues to dive and some of the higher elevations uh we, we can't even actually roll out some snow ringing out in this air air mass because we do have not just cold air at the surface but cold air aloft above 5,000 feet so yeah once you get to those higher elevation areas it is going to be actually snowing in some of those higher elevations back into areas of Colorado there as the low pressure continues to deepen and brings more big storm development back into Iowa, back into Missouri, as well as into Wisconsin again and northern portions of Illinois during the day on Sunday, heading into Monday and then going into Tuesday. Again, we have yet another storm continuing to amplify from that storm that was off the Carolina, uh, you know, out, off the southern, you know, South Carolina coast, <laughs> South California, Southern California coast there. And uh, by by the time we get into Tuesday, yes, we'll be ringing out the precipitation again back into Wisconsin, back into Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, and yes. Ohio this time. Finally, Ohio will likely get into the action with much needed rain. But by then, the high pressure above in Canada is going to do its dirty work and help lower the pressures enough where we're going to start at least seeing a low pressure center likely forming down there into the Caribbean. And in fact, uh, the National Hurricane Center has now went ahead and highlighted this area. We've been talking about this actually for a couple of days now, but this is now uh come on to the national hurricane center radar because it's within seven days they only go out seven days i know a lot of models go beyond that but the national hurricane center goes out seven days so this became within their seven day window within the next seven days we could be looking at a 20 percent probability of something likely trying to form down there into uh the caribbean and if you start looking at some of the ensemble guidances kind of looks like this right so Yes, I do feel we're going to have a lot lower pressure starting to come together down there into the Caribbean. Now, remember, a weaker storm will likely tend to keep it further westbound and keep it trending west. So most of the European guidance actually has this storm traversing over the Yucatan. We've seen this numerous times before this hurricane season and entering portions of the southern Gulf of Mexico. Now, a stronger storm will likely take a little bit faster track is what the GFS is implying that it will continue a little bit further off to the east. A stronger storm tends to move a little bit faster, plus it tends to be uh, moving further to the east. And we saw that with Francine, right? I mean, it literally developed way down south into the southern Gulf of Mexico. And then that storm kind of hugged the coast. And the stronger it got, the further east it went. And then eventually ended up actually making landfall into New Orleans, right and it started all the way down here so yes a stronger storm will likely continue to push this further off to the east and one of the reasons why i think it's going to be more progressive is this jet stream going into next week very fast in fact very warm for this time of year this is the first week of fall we'll have plenty of pacific air coming back in the pic picture that's a warm that's a warm flow coming off the Pacific plus it's a very progressive flow so these things um, are going to be moving fairly quickly and this will likely a stronger storm will easily pick up uh, this storm and shift it off further off to the east so by the time we head into Wednesday 
this is what it looks like, right? So we've got that heat dome, that ridge of high pressure building over in Canada, finally helps to lower the pressures enough where we're gonna have a low pressure center likely formed by Tuesday or Wednesday. We could even have closer to a named storm by then. And now let's turn to the ensembles. Because again, even on Tuesday, this is you know Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning on the European ensembles, has that well above average precipitation down there in the Western Caribbean through the Yucatan. So either way, storm or not, if you got plans down there in Cancun, uh, Playa del Carmen, just expect a lot of rainfall because this is kind of the Central, Central American gyro region. It's gonna be slow development. So even though there's nothing right now, by Friday, we're gonna start seeing these daily showers and thunderstorms. So it's gonna be very wet across the Yucatan. And if a storm does develop, then we'll have the storm threat issued uh, by then. But yes, the European is favoring a, a move over the Yucatan, a weaker storm and going back over the southern portions of the Gulf of Mexico. So if we bring it out of all the ensembles where we are right now with the latest European, you can see some of these numbers aren't like very significically high. It's a it continues to remain on the weaker side. So that's why this ensemble actually tries to push it a little bit further west and sneaking it back into areas of the Gulf of Mexico, but it still pushes it further north and east, likely as east as eastern Texas or all, all the way into Florida, but most members are actually in Florida. That's where you have the highest probability. And of course the GFS ensembles are stronger. So the stronger storm does take it further east and doesn't even actually shift it into the Southern Gulf of Mexico. It actually is a stronger storm and clips the Yucatan and swings it back into the uh, areas of the Gulf and then back into you know Florida in, you know, sometime by the middle of later part of next week. So if we break down the ensembles for that last week of September, yeah, we've got more rain, right? I mean, the exact, pretty much some of the similar spots that came in that dumped all the heavy rain from Francine. And then of course we had the, the no name storm off the Carolina coast. This is the, probably the last thing you wanna see is yet another storm coming in the same general facility. And then, you know, Florida, some of these areas have picked up 20, 25, you know, inches above average for like Tampa, Sarasota, those, those places are just waterlogged across this region. So yes, this would be more heavy rains. By the time you get up into the Ohio Valley, they'll be welcoming those rains back into West Virginia and Pennsylvania, and especially there in Ohio there, right? You're in a desperate drought. So these are gonna be a welcome sign for you uh, as we end with a wet, time across those regions and the gfs ensembles again applies the same thing uh, even though it is potentially a stronger type setup as of right now it's still going to go in the same general vicinity from louisiana to florida always has to be on high alert from this system through the southeast and then the remnants would likely carry it as far north as the ohio valley and then likely swing up the east coast again bringing more heavy rain for the Carolinas back into Virginia as well as into West Virginia to close out the month of September. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update, why I protect you before and after the storm.